Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Matthew, the third chapter, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so for now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. And then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, be with us this day, create in all of us a clean heart, and put a right spirit in us, now and always. Amen. The young son of a Baptist minister, was in church one morning when he saw for the first time a baptism by immersion. You know, when you, you dunk the person in. He was greatly interested in what he saw. So much so that it fascinated him. So the next morning, he decided to baptize his three cats in the bathroom. <laughs> the youngest kitten was immersed in the tub. She didn't like it, but she took it pretty well. And so did the younger cat. Again, didn't like it, but took it pretty well. But the old tomcat would have nothing to do with this. The feline struggled with the boy, clawed, tore at his skin, ripped at his clothes, and finally got away. The boy would have nothing to do with this. With considerable effort, he caught the old cat, brought him back to the tub, and proceeded with the ceremony, but the cat acted worse than it had the first time, even scratching the boy's face. Finally, after barely getting the cat even splattered with water, finally he threw the cat down in disgust and said, fine, be a Presbyterian if you want to. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Today we are talking about baptism. This morning in scripture we have the story of John the Baptist taking Jesus into the Jordan River and baptizing him. Baptism is one of two sacraments in the Presbyterian faith. And so it is something that is very important to our journey with God. According to the Presbyterian Book of Order, baptism is the following. In baptism we participate in Jesus' death and resurrection. We die to what separates us from God and are raised to newness of life. Baptism points us back to the grace of God expressed in Christ, and it points us forward to the Christ who fulfilled God's purpose. The water of baptism symbolizes the water of creation, of the flood, and of the exodus from Egypt. The water then links us to God's goodness in creation and God's promise to Israel. Baptism is a sign and symbol of inclusion in God's grace and covenant with the church. Baptism seals and enacts God's grace offered to all. Baptism is God's gift of grace, and it is our response to that grace. Baptism gives the church its identity and commissions the church for ministry in the world. And that's from the worship section of the Book of Order. In other words, in baptism, God claims us. He puts his sign on us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death by uniting us with Christ in his death and resurrection. Now, if we look at what John the Baptist was doing, he was calling people to repent from their sins. He was baptizing as a way of cleansing people and connecting them to God. So if we put those two things together, it brings up a question that I have had before, and I don't know if you've had the same thing, but have you ever wondered why Jesus was baptized? Baptism are baptisms, and the way John baptized, we understand that baptism is a sign of God's faithfulness. It is the washing away of our sin. It is a rebirth. 
It is us putting on a fresh garment for Christ. It is us being sealed by God's Spirit. Jesus wasn't in need of repentance. His faithfulness was intact. His rebirth and fresh garment and sealed by God's Spirit, I'm pretty sure he had that covered. So why did he get baptized? What does it teach us as Christians in today's world? Well, first, Jesus was confessing not his sin, but the sins of all of us. He was doing things on our behalf. Jesus, John came and called people to repent. Repentance means to turn away from. When we repent, we turn away from our sins. And because of God's love, we turn to God. When we turn to God, it means that our lives are perfect and peaceful. When we turn to God, it means that our lives will become free of hardship and tragedy. Turning to God means we are automatically blessed with good fortune and success. That was a test. Did you see it? Did you, did you all catch what I did there? Um, oh, I'm, I'm being tricky this morning. Turning to God does not equal perfect, peaceful, crisis-free lives. Turning away from sin and turning to God means that in all of life, God's love is with us. It means that Christ in his baptism demonstrated uh, his acts on our behalf. And, and it is with, through all that we celebrate and endure, we do with God and Christ. The second reason to think today is Jesus was baptized to signify the beginning of his ministry. This is an important trait for us. We like to remember dates and times and things that are important to us. I think it's part of our human condition. And as I didn't know till yesterday, but as we learned yesterday, those special events are called the main thing. And we all have main things that we remember. I remember birthdays, anniversaries. I remember the day I was ordained. I won't forget yesterday, I promise. I remember the day my children were born. I remember my first date with Marcy. I remember my wedding day, and so on and so on. We remember portion and dates. We remember the main thing in our lives. We also tend to remember bad, pivotable times as well. I remember the day my parents died. I remember tragic events that changed the way I look and move forward from this day on. I don't think anyone will ever forget what they were doing the day John F. Kennedy was assassinated. I wasn't born yet, and I don't think anyone will forget what they were doing when the towers fell in 2011. Jesus' baptism is the same way. It is a way of remembering the beginning of his ministry. It's important to us. It shows us the following. Jesus was baptized as we are. Jesus began his ministry and fulfilled his purpose, just like we do with our lives. Jesus had his moments of joy and moments of trial. So do we. Jesus' baptism shows us and points us to his humanity. And third, when Jesus was baptized, the heavens opened up and the Spirit of God was seen descending on him like a dove. And a voice said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Now, I, I, I seem to be getting into this habit. I have to quote William Buckley. So here's what Barclay says. Uh, Barclay claims that this piece of scripture is of supreme importance. He explains it this way, so I'm just gonna read a little bit. That sentence is composed of two quotations. This is my beloved son, is a quotation from Psalm 2, verse seven. Every Jewish person accepted that Psalm as a description of the Messiah who was to come. With whom I am pleased is from Isaiah 42, one, which is a description of the suffering servant. These words spoken from God during Christ's baptism shows us that, we, that he was indeed the Son of God and that the way in front of him was the way of the cross. Our baptism and the baptism of Jesus is crucial to our faith because at its essence, what we're really talking about is God's gift of grace. So we need to know and, and we need to understand what grace is. So I'm going to do that, of course, with a story. So everywhere he went, he was known as the balloon man. And he was called the balloon man because everywhere he went, he carried a great big bunch of balloons that he held in his hand. He was never without his 
balloons. They were colorful, they were bright, they were cheery, and they were part of who he was. When he went to the grocery store, he took his balloons. When he went to work, his job was such that he was able to hold on to those balloons. When he went to the bank, he took his balloons. Everywhere he went, the balloons were a part of this man. They were ex an extension of who he was. And every day, once a year, he went to the fair because of the one place where he felt like he fit in with all his balloons. The only thing he didn't like is everybody came up and wanted to buy his balloons. And of course, he couldn't sell even one of them. Well, one day when he was at the fair, the balloon man, just out of habit, signed up like everybody else because they were giving away that day a free cruise. He didn't expect to win, wouldn't know what he would do if he did win, but he got caught up in the moment and he signed up for the raffle. And as it would be, of course, two weeks later, he got a call saying that he had won a first class ticket on a cruise. And he was very excited because he and his balloons had never been on a cruise. So he decided that he would go on the cruise. Now the day of the cruise, the cruise company sent him a limousine to take him to the port. And he thought that was great because all the balloons went right through the sunroof and he could go to the cruise ship with his balloons in tow. So he took his balloons and off he went, got onto the ship and was just impressed with the enormity, the vastness, the luxury, the opulence of what he saw on the cruise ship was phenomenal. And he went up on the deck for the Bon Voyage party and had a wonderful time throwing the confetti and waving and doing everything. He got so caught up in the party that he hadn't even checked into his cabin and it was time for dinner. So he went to where he was supposed to go to dinner and he goes into the dining room still holding his balloons. And he was met by the maitre d' who says, sir, I'm very sorry, but it's not safe to bring the balloons into the dining room. The waiters are all running around with trays and the ship's moving and it's just not a place where you can have the balloons. Well, he couldn't let go of them. He couldn't tie them to a chair. He couldn't, he couldn't be without them for a minute. So he went back up onto the deck, not eating dinner, and he had a hot dog by the pool. And that was how he spent his evening. And then he decided he better check into his cabin. He hadn't even done that yet. So he's taken to his cabin. They open the door. It's a beautiful suite, best room on the ship, marble entryways, fully stocked bar, a jacuzzi on the deck. I know that because I've seen, I've never done it, but I've seen that on cruises. When my cruise ship pulls up to another cruise ship, I see what, what you really can't experience on a cruise. So, so I, know it, it, I know it happens. Uh, and so, um, so anyway, back to my story. So the balloon man saw the room, saw how inviting the bed was, saw how luxurious everything was. But the, the room was so designed, he couldn't get in the room without breaking a balloon. There was just no way to get them all through the door. He tried, the steward tried, it wasn't gonna work. So he couldn't go in the cabin. So he took his balloons and he got a blanket and a pillow and he slept on a deck chair out by the pool. Well, the next morning, the balloon man was handed a golden ticket, a special invitation for him to join the captain at his table for dinner that evening because he was the honored guest, he had won the cruise. And he now was in possession. He was going to have the finest meal cooked by the head chef. And he got to dine with the captain that evening. Now he had a problem because he couldn't go. He was told he wasn't allowed in the dining room when they were serving dinner. And he couldn't get rid of his balloons. So he did the next best thing. He thought, I'll go and see them set up for dinner. And that way I can experience what it's going to be like. And he did. And he watched them. And he decided it was going to be a great banquet, a great dinner that he couldn't be part of. So he went outside onto the deck, and he's hearing the party taking place, and he's hearing everyone have a great time, and he goes into his pocket, and he pulls out that special engraved golden invitation that was just for him, and he does what he never expected that he would do. He slowly but surely releases his hands, and one by one, the balloons float up over the ocean and disappear into the night and the balloon man walked into the dining room and had a most wonderful time and a great vacation on a fabulous cruise ship. That golden ticket is God's grace. It is an invitation that we don't earn, that we don't deserve, that is given to us 
And God is waiting for us to open it, to use it, and to come in to the most wonderful banquet of our lives. Unfortunately, we are the balloon men, or the balloon man and woman, if you want to get politically correct, as we should be. We are the balloon men. We are the balloon people. We have these balloons, and we can't let go of them. We can't let go of our guilt, and our shame, and our stubbornness, and our selfishness, and any other adjective you want to put on to those balloons. And it's sad, because that invitation of God's grace is there. It's right there. All we have to do is let go of what's holding us back, and accept that invitation. Baptism does that. Our lives with God does that every day. It's time for us to let go of our balloons and join the most wonderful party. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you. Please give us the courage to accept every day the grace that you give us, the love that we can share with others, and all that your love and life with Christ symbolizes for us, now and always. Amen.